morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully, you are all doing well. And this is the USMLE Sarthi team. We are now live in this group and uh, we'll answer your questions today. Uh, there are a lot of topics to be discussed. So, before I do that, I really want to thank the members of this uh, group. You've been very, very encouraging to each other helping each other out, answering questions, motivating each one of you. So thank you for that. Thank you for uh, making this group very robust and interactive. So for today's sessions, uh, we have a couple of topics. The first is, uh, you know, the confusion or the questions you may have around uh, the OET, the CS cancellation. So we'll tackle that. Uh, we already have uh, several questions there. Then we will talk about rank order list. Many of you have asked us questions about rank order list. Uh, finally, after the rank order list, we can take questions on your letter of intent. So those of you who are going into the match now, obviously uh, the letter of intent, the NRMP uh, match or the, uh, the NRMP <coughs> submission opens, uh, I think next week on how to rank your program. So there are a lot of questions on that. We'll tackle that. And uh, then for those of you preparing for the next season, we will also answer questions on what else uh, can you do. So hopefully this is all good. You can all hear me. Uh, I do have Dr. Puneet Reddy from our uh, group, our team. Uh, so if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and uh, we will go from there. So now let me just quickly cut to the chase and discuss about the CS suspension, the OET, because I saw a lot of uh, questions on the Facebook and you emailed us. So what we know for sure is CS is discontinued. There are no plans to resume CS as of now. And the five pathways that ECFMG used for certification during this current 2021 match season will continue. There will be an additional pathway. And uh, we, we do have a video on those five pathways. So I'll, I'll request Dr. Reddy to just post the link to that video. These were the pathways they had used uh, in the 2021 season. The additional pathway information we are still awaiting for from ECFMG. The application for 2022 through these pathway is yet to be opened, so there is nothing to worry about. Uh, just know that the same pathways will apply at least the five, five of them uh, from the last season. And the IMGs that have acquired the certification through any of these accepted pathways for 2021, you need not worry about it. You need not uh, reapply these. Uh, but of course, if your application was rejected for the 2021 match uh, for the pathway certification can reapply. And as is the case with ECFMG, they keep saying they are working on finding better ways to assess the clinical skills for the residency applicant. So, so that's something we already know. Now, some of the gray areas and some of the questions we have received. Is the step to CS cancelled permanently? Yes. So USMLE has announced that CS in its current form, uh, the physical, you know, the six centers that they had in the US and all that is discontinued. There are no plans to bring it back. However, we don't know if USMLE, uh, what it means by saying commitment to performance-based assessment, clinical skills has accelerated. Uh, so you can believe, you can expect a new assessment exam sometimes in 2022 or later, but for the immediate season, for the next season, the uh, season opening up on September 15, 2021, those of you are applying, you don't need to worry about that. So there'll be no CS for you guys. Next question, if I have a previous attempt on step to CS, I failed it, will it be continued to be reported? Now, we are all awaiting more information from ECFMG, but when ECFMG is reporting CS pass to program, it is likely that they'll continue to report a CS attempt or a failure. Now, some of you uh, may find it to your disadvantage because the OET failures are not reported. 
uh, CS failures at this point we are given to believe will be reported. How you can overcome? It's not that CS failure is impossible to overcome. Every year we have many students, many of the Sarthi students that match with CS attempts. So obviously quality USCE personalized LORs will help you overcome these red flags and more on that later. Of course, if uh, you are looking for US clinical experience, uh, we can help go to our website and I think Dr. Reddy will post that link. <clears throat> Next question, is it going to be tougher for IMGs to get into US residency now? Great question. And obviously programs are always looking to see what objective evidence they can see to screen the applicants and choose the best among them. Uh, of course, step one will go pass fail from 2022. CS is now no longer there. So the step two CK score will become very important filter. And then there are other parts of the application like step three. But again, for the upcoming season, step one score is there. So you have step one score, the CK score, uh, step three scores, uh, they are likely to become more important. Uh, research is becoming increasingly important. So if you need more information, we can talk about that. We have several videos. Uh, we done a research team as well. The USCE uh, will become more important. It'll continue to give edge to the IMGs. Remember that the IMG match rate continues to increase. It's more than 61% now, whether you need visa or not need visa. So it's not that uh, ECFMG or USMLE system is against IMGs. Uh, you guys are doing well, continue to do well. Uh, but of course, the some of these criteria, you know, some of these uh, scores will become more important. So the weightage to different components uh, will become different. Okay, so now the question is, next one, uh, if the CS is now cancelled, how will programs look to assess the clinical skills? So USCE is not a clear substitute for CS, the clinical experience. But as I said, the US clinical experience, the strong LOR that you gain out of that will become more important. It will help program assess your communication, interpersonal skills, you know, patient counseling skills, all some of this was part of CS, you know, spoken English proficiency, the integrated clinical encounter, all these components of the CS, the programs will probably look into the LORs and during the interviews, they'll discuss more about your US clinical experience. So again, if you need more help, we have videos on this, which kind of rotations can help you. I encourage you to go to our uh, YouTube channel, subscribe to that. And we also push out information on Instagram, so that may be of help to you. Uh, next question, how do I obtain ECFMG certification now? So, of course, if you already took CS, passed the exam, once you have completed the other, you know, the step one, the CK, and the credential verification, you will automatically be ECFMG certified, no issues with that. If you could not take CS or failed CS, you'll need to pass the OET and apply through one of the pathways. Like I said, the five pathways, uh, the video is already there. You can watch that. We have done that a few months ago. Uh, so that's the case. If you are already ECFMG certified through the pathways from last year, you will continue to be ECFMG certified. So there is no issue if you took OET and are certified. Uh, then should I go ahead and take the OET now? Now, OET will be required, as ECFMG has said, for your ECFMG certification through the pathways uh, for the upcoming season, but obviously there is no rush. There are still about seven to eight months up to September 15th, so as you get ready for it, uh, you can take your time. Uh, hopefully, the pandemic will be under control, the centers will not close, so you will have time to book OET date and get the results. Uh, you could wait a couple of months and then book the OET, but uh, obviously prepare it for it. It may be an easier exam. Uh, you still need to orient yourself. Uh, next question, will there be more ethics, communication, patient safety related questions in the USMLE exams now? So the exams, the USMLE has already increased the communication and per interpersonal skills question in the step one, as you may have known, you know, in October 2020. 
there are more questions on patient safety, ethics, professionalism. Now in step 2 CK from November 2020, uh, as well. So it's unlikely that there will be drastic changes in the distribution of the questions over and above what they have already done in late 2020. Finally, some pros and cons because you know I saw a lot of discussion on the YouTube on the Facebook group uh, on pros and cons. So obviously one of the pros is uh, you have one less exam at least in the rigor to worry about. Uh, overall cost should go down, accommodation, travel, preparation for CS, we all know how intense it was. Uh, so that's one thing. And at least you got nine months before, uh, you know, they have told you this. So the hustle for the CS results and all, uh, that should go down. Uh, then those are some of the things uh, that uh, are pros, right? Now the cons, what are the disadvantages for the IMGs? Uh, obviously, if you have an attempt or failure on CS, uh, you will not have a chance to correct, but uh, you can focus on other parts of the application. Uh, that's an unfortunate part if you have an attempt on CS. Then there will be an increased importance on CK scores, step three scores, like I said, uh, this will uh, work in favor of uh, those IMGs who have higher scores or who just uh, have better test taking skills. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, then the other thing is obviously the quality US clinical experience and letters will have more weightage. Again, this varies from individual in terms of what USCE you've been able to get now. Tele rotations have been increasing in its importance. And based on our experience in the past or this current season, uh, programs are very open to tele rotation. So if you cannot travel, uh, you know, that would be a good uh, thing to look at. Again, look at our website. If you can travel, of course, uh, on-site rotations are always going to be more preferable. If you can get it, electives or rotations in a university setting, go for it. Uh, unfortunately, many of them may be closed for COVID. So to just to summarize, uh, what all does this OET CS mean for IMGs? You know, you got to plan to take the OET, check the five pathways for 2021. Like I said, the video is already there. The next pathway, they will uh, tell us very soon. Uh, make sure, try to get the certification done before September 15. Target quality USCE, strong personalized LOR. Step 2 CK will become increasingly important, although for the com coming season, step 1 will be there. So, you know, there, there will be that additional exam. Uh, step 2 CS, if you have an attempt, that does not mean the end of your journey. Many, many students have always, always matched with an attempt in CS. Uh, you know, research could help, USCE could help. So don't get disappointed. If you have an attempt, you will be able to do it. Okay, so that was on the OET CS changes that the ECFMG has uh, come up with. I am receiving other questions that I, I will go over. I have been um, now, uh, so let me switch. Some of the interviews are virtual. What qualities do you think program will consider for ranking? This question is coming from Mukesh. So very great uh, question, Mukesh. Uh, in terms of ranking, there, there is another video that we've done, but I'll, I'll kind of summarize for you. The programs look at portfolio. So when I say portfolio, Obviously, there is the interviewing skills. The type of questions they've been asking are fairly standard. The difference is they cannot meet you face to face. But again, the portfolio includes your scores. It includes your LORs. LORs continue to become more and more important. The USCE LOR because they cannot see you, uh, you know, in a face to face setting. So that becomes important. The interaction with in the during the interview day. Uh, if you've had with the faculty uh, meet and greet sessions with the residents, those become important. Some programs have invited students back for either a virtual or an on-site visit also. So there are these various factors that will come into play. The factors per se 
remain more or less the same on how they rank the applicant and you know uh, dr reddy can point you to that video how important is to write letter of intent comes from humera so letter of intent let's uh, take a step back on on what this letter is what is the time to communicate so letter of intent communicates your fit and interest to the program right so that's what the letter of intent means now letter of intent becomes important it continues to show that you are interested in the program but is it a make or break no a lot of times you will match without the letter of intent so letter of intent if you have to write you have to obviously showcase what skills you bring and how do you fit into what the program is looking for is it important yes it becomes more important if you think that you are in the borderline case for the program uh, we strongly recommend every applicant write the letter of intent but it is not make or break there are obviously you know you may not have written the or you may not write the letter of intent to the program but you can still match there it's not a make or break uh don't worry about it but yes if you have time which i think a lot of you will because the you know the ranking or the programs uh, the nrmp uh, uh, deadline is march 3rd so you have a lot of time spend some time write that L, uh, loi that is not going to do you any harm next question comes from sindhu i moved to the city where i interviewed should i send an email mentioning it not really i mean you have interviewed you know the irada application has your uh, address uh, unless of course you feel that the uh, you were in that city and that program is likely to invite you for the second visit i think you can let it go you don't need to tell them that you moved uh, that just complicate matters should i send letter of intent to all programs where i have interviewed or just top 3 and what should be the subject letter a uh, subject line of the letter of intent so again as i mentioned in the other video uh, typically between 3 to 5 uh, is a very safe uh, kind of uh, uh, strategy to send now there is no legality in involved in this let me be very clear if you send it to 10 it's not that it is illegal as you are not breaking any laws it is unethical of course so if you send it to 20 of your program saying you know uh, i'm going to rank you number 1 so you can go ahead and write it to your top 3 there are no issues subject uh, line uh, you know letter of interest is a very standard subject line obviously in, in you know assuming you attach a pdf uh then there can be more compelling ones uh something coming out of your interview or you know maybe p some people like to write their amc id as letter of intent amc id xyz those kind of things if you are in the city you know program very well or if you have rotated there then of course uh, you know some of those other things can come in the letter uh, or in the title any advice for people with zero interviews well so uh, we do have a video on how to plan for the next season so let me tell you if unfortunately you haven't had an interview this season you should now start preparing for the next season don't wait for march 15th or april to start preparing get out a plan and dr reddy can send you that link to the planning for the next season 12 month plan focus depending again on your profile unfortunately i don't know your profile but uh, depending on the profile figure out what you lack if you are in your home country work experience especially in the covid setting is going to be very very crucial if you don't have step 3 take step 3 uh, research like i said continues to be important but more important is going to be the us clinical experience the uh, whether it's tele or otherwise however coming back to this season even if you have zero interviews soap is already there right and imgs do match in soap it is not that they don't match in soap if you have zero interviews at least prepare for the soap interview when i say prepare make sure you 
obviously don't know which programs are going to go into SOAP. It could be categorical, it could be prelim. So start with preparing some standard questions. We, we have a couple of videos that we can point you to on how to the common questions uh, for the interviews. Be ready because that five day period, you know, the Monday through Thursday in the match week, is gonna be very, very intense for SOAP. So in the short term, you know, prepare for that SOAP week, but start thinking about next season whether it's research, USCE, step three. Uh, you can set up time with us. We do have uh, a, pro a review of your profile. Go to our website, uh, set up time with us. We can review your profile. There's no cost to it. And uh, hopefully it will help you. I recently passed my CK and would have ECFMG certification shortly. This comes from Uruj. Should I email programs about this change? Absolutely, there is uh, no harm in doing it. Uh, although, of course, programs do get that information. But yes, since they may put you in your rank order list, and if you don't not certified, there will be you know issues, questions. So yes, you should go ahead and talk or email them or communicate with them on your uh, certification. So congratulations on getting certified. What should we address to those programs whom we are not ranking number one? Like I said, it is not illegal. So you can say, either you can continue and say, I am going to rank you number one and without baiting an eyelid, uh, you know, the programs play the game all the time. Uh, or if, you know, you don't feel like it ethically, you know, you feel this is not the right, you can use words like highly or something similar. But remember that uh, if you say I'll put you um, in my top five, top six or something, it's obvious that they, they are not your top one, right? So that's, that's where you got to make a decision. Next question comes from Apoor. Uh, I sent a thank you letter soon after the interview, also mentioning my interest in the program. Do I write it again? Uh, good question. Uh, Thank you after the interview is a courtesy. Uh, you should do it. Uh, interest in the program. Now, like I said, letter of intent is a different communication. So we strongly suggest you send that LOI. Uh, but like if you've already done that, if you don't have time, you don't have to. Uh, technically, it's a separate uh, letter. So you can do that again. Do you recommend sending the letter at this point of time or in mid-feb or both? Uh, letter of intent, you can start now. I think the, uh, you know, any week uh, from now on, next 10 days should be fine. They will be starting on their uh, rank order list in the next uh, week or so. Should we send the letter of intent to all the faculty that we interviewed with or just the PD? Question comes from Nikita. Uh, definitely the PD. Uh, you know, faculty with you, you interviewed with, if it's one or two, you can send it to them, but definitely PD and the, uh, the coordinator. Sometimes the faculty is, that particular faculty may not be involved in your uh, rank order list. So, but you know, no harm in sending, send a PDF. Uh, Sindhu is asking, is SOAP going to be advantageous for IMGs this year? Great question, Sindhu. Like everything else, this season is different. Uh, we don't know yet, obviously, uh, but what I can tell you, looking at the data that we have seen from our students, IMGs are getting interviews, they are getting pre-matches. So in terms of the interviews, in terms of the pre-matches, uh, they are getting it, many of them even without on-site USCE. The question is, how long is the rank order list of the programs and therefore how many spots go vacant? I doubt uh, many categorical uh, IM, FM, uh, pediatrics, uh, neurology, pathology will go in uh, SOAP, uh, but they could. Uh, prelim programs always, always go in SOAP. So we'll see. As always, we always have IMGs match in SOAP. Now the percentage is very less. Even last year, we had a couple of our students match. So be ready. You have nothing to lose. Okay, be ready and uh, we'll see unfortunately only on that monday we'll know how which kind of programs go in 
will it be advantageous i think it all depends on the spots uh, but why not you know you should hope for the best if we send LOI to more than one program, should we mention that we are ranking them highly or does that sound too vague? Obviously, highly sounds a bit vague. It's not as compelling as number one or the top. Uh, this is where your internal, you know, the ethical uh, dilemma can come in. Uh, highly is good. It is better than saying I'll, I'll rank you in my top 10 or top 5. Next question, I'm a fresh IMG about to start my journey. So in case I get ECFMG certification after step one CK and OET, then for matching, what are the things to be done by match by IMG? Great question. Uh, let's take it step by step. I don't think you're just starting your journey. So, you know, obviously there is step one uh, and CK and by then uh, we may have something replace OET. Uh, so let's not worry about OET for you because you're not going into the match uh, right away. Other things uh, for people who are starting their journey, absolutely critical is US clinical experience. Uh, try to get your electives if you are not graduated yet. If you are a graduate, try to get on-site US clinical experience. If visa is an issue, try to get rotations. So that's absolute must. Try to get involved in research. Research is becoming increasingly important. And Dr. Reddy can, can uh, get you a link to the timeline video that we did. He actually wrote that blog. The other thing is volunteering in your home country. If you are outside US, uh, you know, join volunteering, uh, things like that. So there is a complete, uh, you know, video we have done. Uh, but don't don't worry about the certification yet focus on step one get a very good score if you are taking step one before december 2021 three digit score will be reported so scores are important on step one and ck so that's uh, that's our initial advice i'm in uh, my third year of mbbs uh, what can i really do to build my cv again i think it's a similar question Building your CV, I think Dr. Reddy had written that blog and we did that video. Uh, very critical. It is great that you guys are starting so early. I'm very impressed. Focus on the scores. Number one, step one and CK. Build your CV by doing volunteer activities. Get involved in, in research in your uh, institution some way or the other. We also run research courses. In fact, our research courses now we are seeing uh, MBBS students come in. So look at that. Uh, plan well for your electives. Hopefully the COVID situation will be under control, but plan those electives. US clinical experience uh, will be important. Volunteering activity, any kind of volunteering activity that showcases your uh, uh, teamwork, leadership skills will be important. And, and then there are these extracurricular activities. You know, many of our students have their own YouTube channel. They, they've started companies. So think on all these things. They'll help you improve your CV. Question 13, I have a new research that just got published. Should I update the program, especially if I have no prior publication? Absolutely, yes, you need to do that. This is a very legitimate uh, thing you need to tell the programs, please go ahead and in, uh, write to all the programs about your new research that got published. What about the programs keeping us in wait list if they don't call us for interviews? Uh, they can take us later on soap or without interview. Unfortunately, it is unlikely that you will match without the interview. If they go into the soap, they will still interview you. So at this point, if you are on wait list, the best chance is uh, keep following up with the program. There may be cancellation interviews. In fact, many students, our students actually receive, received interviews last week also. So there are cancellation interviews that are coming up. Your best shot is to interview. If not, and if the program goes into SOAP, right? We don't know if that same program will go into SOAP. If they go into SOAP, they will call you for the interview, but without interview, unlikely to match. Next question, what about age restrictions for old IMGs, 35 year old? Good news for you is age is not a barrier. In fact, there is a 58 year old PGY1 we know of, 
our students uh, there is a student who matched out of uh, uh, the cycle uh, just recently she started her residency 10 days ago uh, she is a 10 year old 11 year old uh, graduate last year we had a 20 year old uh, yfg match there is no age restriction next question uh, do programs make exceptions for visa policy h1 versus j1 if we send a request and if I'm a high scoring candidate with high score on step three, uh, the visa policy is up to the program. Sometimes they may make exception community programs. L let me give you a scenario. Some community programs will say we can only do three spots in H1 and then they will pick those people. The other IMGs will have to go on J1. So that's the bit of a flexibility. Uh, university programs or typically the programs that only do J1 will not have that flexibility. Uh, I would urge you to be very, very careful when it comes to negotiations. Do it after the match, don't, or after, you know, the match results on a Monday or Friday when we know it. Don't negotiate now. Now this negotiation may just mean that that program is gonna rank you lower. Just my opinion, I don't know your profile or anything, but negotiation at this point uh, may not be that wise. Is there a fee for SOAP? So there is a limited number of programs you can apply to as long as you've registered for uh, NRMP and you've applied to one program in the main, uh, you know, the uh, through the NRMP. Uh, there is uh, the, the fee is already, you've already paid that fee. So there's no additional fee for soap. Again, there is a video you should look at. We've done a video on how to match in soap. Uh, but there is a limit to the number of programs. So that's what, uh, you know, is, is there in, in this soap. Uh, so that was good. Uh, you know, any questions? Uh, we, we are here. Again, I want to continue to thank this community. You are helping all each other you're making a robust community and uh, you know i look at it often enough my team looks at it hopefully you're finding this facebook group very very useful uh, please uh, keep it clean as you all know in in this day and age uh, there are a lot of spammers there are a lot of people promise you all those kind of things don't fall for it do your own due diligence report the posts if uh, you feel anything goes goes against the policies of this group you know racism religion anything that we as an img community don't stand for please report it and uh, I, I think you guys are doing a great job thank you again uh, any other question i am here for some time i'll i'll be here uh, if you have uh, questions for a couple of minutes i, I can be here uh, uh, again, there is one question that I wanted to get you uh, get. Uh, how do you decide the importance H1 versus J1, H1 in a community program, J1 in a university program? So obviously it, it depends a lot on whether the program can offer, what they offer. I think what you need to see is uh, the reputation and your own goal. So there is a video on or the link that Dr. Reddy can uh, share on how to make your rank order list. So I'll give you just one example. You know, uh, Cook County is a great uh, program, community program, right? But much better than many, many uh, university programs. So uh, in this case, the community program is, is much better. Now, specifically on H versus J, if for example, you are in IM and you are targeting top three fellowships, cardiology, GI, hemonc, etc. They are easier, they are more available on J, uh, more and more universities do J. So that may be something that you may want to consider because switching from H in residency to J in fellowship may be very difficult just of the because of the timing. Uh, if you want a job as an internist, hospitalist, uh, obviously H1B should not have an issue. Do programs look at CS or USCE while ranking the applicants? Uh, yes, like I mentioned earlier, the programs look at the portfolio of your entire application. 
interview is one of the most important ones but yes they will go back they will look at your lors the usc and i do encourage you to look at that video that we did on how programs uh, rank the applicant and what is the process they follow where do imgs match in their rank order list uh, good question if you look at the nrmp data you know always go back to the statistics the nrmp statistics uh, i think the typical img the contiguous ranking goes up to 7 or 8 and uh, then they typically end up matching in their top 3 or 4 uh, of course depends on the specialty i'm just talking in general in im uh next question i am taking step 1 end of march and ck in early july uh and oet end of july or mid september do you think the timeline could work uh again i encourage you to look at that video that we did on the timeline the 12 months timeline i think this is too aggressive step 1 end of march ck in july uh just i i feel it is a bit aggressive but each person is different as long as you remember that scores at least in this season step 1 ck both scores will be of paramount importance so as long as you are not compromising on scores and you know this should be fine then question next question how many interviews in the same specialty would give higher confidence to match this year for an img so the keyword here is this season um I'll tell you what we know, and I'll tell you what no one knows. So first, anyone who's telling you any number, uh, I, I think they don't know because this is the first time in the COVID era. Uh, so forget what will happen or the number per se. In general, I will tell you uh, seven interviews say in I am. Again, I'm quoting the NRMP data. Uh, about seven in I am is very reasonable. Uh, our students have tended to match at three. Again, in I am visa, no visa, three to four for our students. I am very confident. Even this year, that will hold. But like I said, uh, we don't know what's going to happen this season. I can only tell you what we have seen, which is IMGs are getting the interviews. Uh, in terms of uh, what is working out, uh, scores, of course, as you know. But in addition to score. the work experience if you are not a recent graduate uh, we've had students sitting in india or other countries covid work experience lot of interviews uh, usc of course helps uh, tele rotation has been helping out quite a bit especially recent graduate uh, quality of lors that continues to play a more important role so uh, these are the things that are working out in terms of number of interviews uh unfortunately i don't have a right i don't have a number to tell you if you have these interviews you will match uh obviously interview performance plays a big role uh i think 7 like i said from the previous years is a good number uh, i'm confident that that number will not change quite but you know it will only go down so uh from that perspective you don't have to worry Uh, if you are on five, or I'm not saying if you are on five, you cannot match. Uh, just quoting the NRMP statistics, people have matched with one interview. There are students I can share the journey with on our website. There are several blogs, uh, so you can you can match. Uh, I am reading a couple of questions. Uh, can someone send me step one material to study? So, Dr. Reddy from our uh, team. Uh, he leads the step one uh, kind of uh, uh, mentorship, so he can point you to the video that he he did recently on uh, step one, and uh, you can go from there. Anything else? Uh, thank you once again, and I appreciate. Like I said, we appreciate you building this community, interacting. Uh, if you need help, let us know. Uh, keep helping each other. now as we transition from those in this season to the next season invite your friends to this community i'm very proud of this uh, you all should be proud of the work you are putting it as imgs in this uh, very uncertain season so uh, thank you all uh, and uh, good luck and we'll be back with another video very soon okay good luck to you all mm-hmm.